Hello, everyone, and good morning. Um, let's get started with this uh, next session on acids and bases in our um, chemistry course. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about salt solutions. Um, originally, this was in the previous session, but I removed it and put it into this session because I thought the previous session was a little bit too long. So um, I kind of made it its own thing. So salt solutions are maybe as you can expect, solutions of, of salt usually in water. And so um, they fit really well within most of our acid-base definitions. Um, so the idea here is that um, as we've seen with conjugate acid-base pairs, there are two ions. Um, one is going to be like, for example, one is going to be, for example, the so uh, with regards to our conjugate acid bases, those are ions. And so salts are also made up of ions. If you think about um, something like sodium chloride, common table salt, that's made up of a sodium ion and a chloride ion. Now, the idea here is that um, whenever we have um, a particular kind of a salt, it can create a basic or an acidic solution um, whenever it's mixed with like, for example, we have the, the conjugate uh, base of uh, a weak, acid that's going to typically when mixed with a neutral forming salt like sodium it's going to form things like basic solutions and we're going to see that as we go through here but um, the idea here is that depending on how we choose our salts and our solutions our salt solutions can actually have um, a degree of um, kind of acidity basicity they can have pHs and depending on those ions that are in our salt we can get different effects so salts that yield neutral solutions. So this is going on to the idea of um, things like our common table salt, sodium chloride, that yields a neutral solution. And why is that? Well, it's because the cation is the cation of a strong base, so sodium. Sodium is the cation of something like sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Um, the hydroxide is a very strong uh, base. And so the sodium doesn't really do much. And then the same thing is true of the chloride in sodium chloride. That is the anion of a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. And so since both of those are kind of like weak conjugate uh, acids or bases, then they will form a neutral solution because they don't really have a lot of ability to um, you know, react with water and form the original uh, acid or base again, as we saw with weak acids and bases. So for example, here we have uh, the example instead of sodium chloride is sodium nitrate. So sodium here is going to be the cation of a strong base. So the cation of something like sodium hydroxide. Then the nitrate, that's going to be this NO3. And so that's going to be the conjugate um, anion. So the conjugate base of the strong acid, um, nitric acid. And so the combination of these two means that we have and we will get a neutral solution. So it's the idea of mixing this cation of strong base with the anion of a strong acid and we get a neutral solution. So a good thing to do is kind of split them up. So like obviously we have here the um, sodium on one side, the nitrate on the other. Um, so we say, well, what goes with nitrate usually? So what goes with nitrate? So something like nitric acid, HNO3. Oh. HNO3, um, and what goes with sodium? It's maybe something like sodium hydroxide. Okay. So Na plus is the strong, or sorry, it's the cation of sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, and uh, nitrate is the anion of nitric acid, a strong acid. Now it doesn't matter, like you don't, there doesn't need to be nitric acid in the solution. It's really just uh, a way of us rationalizing the effect of those ions in solution. Um, most likely this sodium nitrate came from a neutralization reaction between the uh, sodium hydroxide and the nitric acid. So a neutralization reaction would be, you know, the, um, the reaction of an acid with a base to produce salt plus water. We'll talk about that more as we go through. Um, but basically, we have this salt here at the end um, where there's a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion. So the solution here will be neutral 
because neither sodium nor nitrate will react with water to any great extent. And that's true because both of these come from strong acids and bases. And so whenever we have a weak acid or base, as we saw before, what's happening is that the conjugate um, base or conjugate acid, after it is dissociated from its original partner, it actually reacts with water to form the original um, acid or base. Now, this doesn't happen here because um, these come from strong acids and bases. And we know that because they don't react with water to any great extent. They kind of just exist in water. They're solvated, they're just in solution. So um, conversely, we can also have, since we can have salts that yield neutral solutions, we must also be able to have salts which yield uh, acidic solutions and in the next slide, basic solutions. So a salt that consists of the cation of a weak base and the anion of a strong acid will yield an acidic solution. So this is um, kind of an instance where maybe we have, instead of um, the sodium that we had on the previous slide, maybe we have ammonium. Uh, ammonium is the uh, cation of a weak base, um, uh, or we could have something else, an anion of a strong acid then as well. So we could have, we still have the nitrate, we could have chloride from hydrochloric acid as well. And so here we have ammonium chloride. And so that's exactly um, something we could have come up with. So we have here again, we can split this down the middle. Um, we have our ammonium here, which is the cation of a weak base, um, ammonium hydroxide maybe. Uh, and then we have the chlorine, which is the anion of a strong acid. Maybe that's going to be HCl, something like that. That's a strong acid that we know that has chloride in it. And then this one um, could be, uh, ammonium hydroxide. Um, or just from ammonium. So ammonium is the cation of uh, is the cation of ammonia, a weak base. So in that instance, we have there um, ammonia has the ability to take a proton from water to form ammonium plus um, hydroxide, so that's how it acts as a weak base. But then ammonium easily reacts with water again to um, regenerate the ammonia. Um, in the case of uh, chloride, uh, we have um, hydrochloric acid. We know about hydrochloric acid. Even maybe before this course, you knew that hydrochloric acid was a pretty strong acid. Um, and that's because the chloride anion doesn't really react with water to any great extent. Um, it's a very useful anion. I mean, um, it makes up one half of one of the most useful seasoning agents, um, sodium chloride, common table salt. Um, but it's, it's um, the anion of a strong acid, and so that makes it, in fact, a very weak base. Um, so the solution will be acidic because ammonium will react with water to produce H3O+. So ammonium will react with water to form the ammonia plus H3O+. So the ammonium here is quite a strong um, conjugate acid of the weak base ammonia. So we learned about that, like weak bases and weak acids typically have strong conjugate uh, pairs. And this is true in this case, where ammonia has a strong conjugate acid in the case of ammonium. This ammonium, this NH4+, plus, NH4 plus will react with water in solution to form ammonia again, plus um, this uh, hydronium ion, this H3O+. Plus. So this is the source of our acidic behavior in this salt solution here. Oh, yes, Benjamin? Uh, so, so the, the chlorine has, no, the chloride has no effect on the actual outcome. Right, right, right. So it's the, um, the anion of a strong acid. So whenever we have, if we recall back to what strong acids are, so if we have our strong acid HCl, whenever we mix that in water, um, we had a complete dissociation, um, which meant that we were splitting it up into H plus or H3O plus and chloride. So our arrow was just a straightforward left to right arrow. And that left us with H3O plus, plus um, our chloride in solution. Oh, there's a plus, um, chloride in solution. So um, this reaction basically went to completion. As soon as we put any sort of amount of uh, hydrochloric uh, or hydrogen chloride 
into water, we get a complete dissociation into um, hydronium ions. So that's the source of our acidic behavior and the chlorides, which um, are going to be the conjugate base of that. The issue here is that chlorides do not really react with water. So like they don't really react with water at all. They don't have the ability to uh, remove a proton, for example, from water. Um, so this reaction just doesn't happen. Um, and that's because the chloride is already pretty stable. Um, it doesn't really uh, want to be grabbing any sort of additional protons. It's got its full octet. Um, it's it's really just kind of pretty happy um, with its its situation. It, it's not small, highly charged. I mean, it's it's just it just has its full octet. It's kind of happy. It's solvated by water, of course, but it doesn't have the ability to disrupt these hydrogen oxygen bonds. And so it doesn't really react with the water to produce like, for example, hydrochloric acid again, and the hydroxide. Um, and even if it did somehow manage to form the hydrochloric acid again, the hydrochloric acid would immediately dissociate into these again. Um, on the other hand, um, with ammonium and ammonia, um, we do have um, a strong conjugate acid in the case of the ammonium, which forms this reaction down here with water. So it reacts again with the water. So the ammonia would, for example, oh, um, have a equilibrium. So because these are weak acids and bases, which actually the majority of acids and bases in nature um, are weak acids and bases. Um, there are very few actually strong acids and bases. Um, so ammonium reacts with water to form ammonium. Um, so like this, and then you end up with the hydroxide over here, like that. And so this is this hydroxide is the the, the source of the basic behavior of ammonia, um, because the OH minus um, in our bronsted lowry theory is is a, is a base. Um, uh, this obviously can react with this again to form these again, which is why um, this is a weak base. But say, for example, we have ammonium in our salt. We don't actually start with ammonia. We don't have ammonia initially. So the concentration of ammonia is really small. So that means that what we do have is a lot of ammonium reacting with water to form ammonia and this uh, hydronium. So that is why we end up with an acidic solution. So even though ammonia is basic, because we start off with more ammonium than ammonia, we end up producing a great deal of um, hydronium ions, H plus. So we increase or sorry, decrease the pH and it becomes more acidic um, as a result. So the idea here is whenever we're dealing with salts is we're sort of cutting out the initial state. Like in this case, we're cutting out the ammonia and now we just have ammonium. Um, in the next case, we'll talk about what we what happens whenever we mix uh, a cation of a strong a cation of a strong base with a, an anion of a weak acid, and we'll see how that goes. I think it's sodium acetate, but basically it's the same thing. So you're sort of like um, yeah, just kind of cutting out the middleman to an extent. Um, you're going straight to the the final product. So in the case of adding ammonia to water, we get ammonium. So we already have ammonium in this salt. So the only reaction that can occur is ammonium plus water. There's no ammonia plus water. Um, so the ammonium, the NH4 plus reacts with the water to form ammonia plus our um, hydronium. And that's the source of, this is our source of our acidic nature. The chloride doesn't really react. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so is that okay? Is it clear? Yeah, more or less. So basically, the ammonia is the reason why it becomes the acid, beca acid because of the hydronium. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. The H3O? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so really, um, like for example, when we have ammonia um, in water, it can react with the water to produce ammonium, the NH4+. So this reacts with water to form this and then forms the base. So that's why this is, whenever we have this, the overall solution is basic because there's more of hydroxide being formed than um, the other direction of the reaction. But say we don't actually have this part here, we don't have it, it doesn't, it's not there. 
we just have this part. So we have the ammonium. So the ammonium now reacts with water to form um, the NH3, which is our ammonia in the original case, and our NH3O plus. Maybe actually if I do this, I don't want to talk, if I talk too much about this, it might end up getting confusing. Um, so in the case of, okay. So this is the first part of our weak base reaction. So then we also have um, a case where ammonium reacts with um, water straight up in the solution. And then this is not the salt case. This is like ammonia and water, not the salt. So okay. So that reacts with the water to form ammonia. So the proton is lost from the ammonium, this one. And then that's going to be plus our hydronium, our, which is our source of the acidic nature. So in this case, what ends up happening is that this H3O plus reacts with our OH minus to form water. So um, this is our KW, if we recall back before. So let's see, H3O plus plus OH minus gives us two waters. So basically in solution, you have all three of these reactions happening if we have an ammonia solution. Ammonia is NH3. So if we have an NH3 solution in water, um, we have these three reactions. We have this one, we have this one, and we have this one. Um, but if we don't, sorry, <clears throat> if we don't have ammonia, so if we do not have NH3, what we do have is NH4 plus. The only, re only reaction which is happening here is this one initially. So initially what we're doing is we're reacting NH4 plus with water. We're getting ammonia and we're getting uh, this hydronium. Now the ammonia can react with more water to produce NH4 plus and OH minus. But it, because of the way that this is set up, um, this here is a much better reaction because this is um, a stronger acid. So this wants to lose its proton more than ammonia. We have more of this reaction than we do of in of H3O plus, which is why we have an acidic solution. Now in this salt, chloride is totally a spectator. It does nothing to affect the acidity of the solution um, because it comes from a strong acid. So really the major reaction is this one. All right, all right. If it's still not clear, maybe I can produce more slides on this or something, I don't know. Um, anyway, so then acidic solutions, um, basically the same thing only in reverse. Um, we have a great deal of, um, sorry, we have the cation of a strong base and the anion of a strong acid. So uh, for example, or sorry, hang on, wait, wait. Unless we're doing we're doing metals first. Sorry. Okay. So a salt that you so okay. We can have um this is something we looked up before this iron nitrate. Um this uh, is uh, a small highly charged iron ion. So this is iron three plus because nitrate is one minus. So nitrate minus, so there's three of them, so that's gonna be minus three minus. So three minus then this is gonna be three plus because it is neutral um, salt. So this is a salt that consists of a small highly charged metal cation, so this one, and the anion of a strong acid, and thus will yield an acidic solution. So the Fe3 plus is a small highly charged metal cation. We saw before how uh, hydrated metal ions can create a, what do you call this? can create an acidic solution. So what's happening there is, you know, it gets surrounded by water molecules and then some of the water molecules get destabilized by the oxygen's interactions with the iron ion. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, it, it is in the previous session. Um, then this iron ion, um, basically it allows the proton from one of the waters to go into solution. 
So if we have a proton in solution, that means it's going to form a hydronium, and the hydronium is what causes the pH to decrease or gives us a more acidic solution. Um, then if we have the nitrate, this is the anion of a strong acid. So much like the chloride before in the previous slide, this is just going to be a spectator ion. It doesn't really react with water to produce um, to produce um, the acid again. It's not uh, going to do that because it's it's pretty stable. If we were to look at the structure of it and to consider it, everything is kind of very stable. It, it's even though it's negatively charged, it, it is relatively happy with the way that it exists. Um, it's not too charged, destabilized. Um, doesn't have too high of a charge density. So generally, it's, it's pretty stable. So this solution will be acidic because the hydrated, sorry, the hydrated iron 3 plus ion will react with water to produce H3O plus. So um, here we have, um, so yeah, this is basically what I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> sorry, the iron in solution, like this iron salt in solution will dissociate. So what that means is that we'll go from this and then we'll end up with, so there's some water here, six waters in fact, um, we'll form um, iron three plus um, aqueous, it's dissolved in water, plus um, three nitrates, three and no, three minus also aqueous. Okay. So um, this iron here will then be solvated by water to form this complex here. Um, this complex here um, is our what we call a hydrated iron complex. What it just what that that's just a fancy way of saying that it's a, an ion surrounded by water, a metal ion surrounded by water. Um, these water molecules. In all cases, the oxygens are pointing towards the iron. That's because the oxygen is kind of a little bit negatively charged because of its lone pair of electrons. And then those lone pair of electrons are interacting with the iron. And then that interaction is what is destabilizing the uh, oxygen hydrogen bond. That oxygen hydrogen bond, then um, being destabilized, is, can be removed or abstracted by another water molecule, by the oxygen of another water molecule which will produce this hydronium. Now, um, this will also lead to um, the formation of a new complex, which has got hydroxide now instead of one of the waters. So you'll notice here that there are six waters initially, now there are only five waters on our iron complex, and one of them has been replaced, been replaced by this hydroxide. Now, this hydroxide um, will be negatively charged, and so the overall charge of the complex is like two plus, because if this is minus one, and this was originally plus three, then this is going to be plus two or two plus. And then we're left with this hydronium ion, which hydronium ions are acidic and they reduce the pH. And so we end up with a lower pH and we end up with a more acidic solution. Okay, salts that yield basic solutions then. So, a salt that yield, or sorry, a salt that consists of the anion of weak acid and the cation of a strong base yields a basic solution. So um, we have the anion of uh, a weak acid, which could be the acetate. So that's uh, from acetic acid from vinegar. Um, and then we have the cation of a strong base and that yields a basic solution. So um, this sodium is from sodium hydroxide. And so that is a strong base. And the acetate is uh, the anion of acetic acid, which is a weak acid. Um, so we have here cation from a strong base and anion from a weak acid. This is the separation here. Um, so this sodium is going to act like the chloride and the nitrate in the previous examples, there's just going to be a spectator ion. It's not really going to do anything. It's just there to balance the overall charges in solution. Then the acetate here, um, it's going to uh, be the one which is going to be our reactive species. And much like the case of the uh, salts that yield acidic solutions, what's going to end up happening is we have more of the um, 
weak, or sorry, the strong conjugate base reacting with water to form um, the hydroxide ions. So uh, how does this look? So this solution will be basic because uh, acetate will react with water to produce um, the hydroxide. So um, we have here the acetate and that's going to react with water to form our vinegar again, our acetic acid plus hydroxide. So this here is removing a hydrogen from the water and then that removal of the hydrogen from water will create the um, acetic acid again. And then that will react with, uh, or sorry, that will also then mean we're left with a hydroxide. So other like um, anions like this could be ascorbate from ascorbic acid or vitamin C. Basically any of these um, acids which have this motif here, this what's called a carboxylic acid group, um, those are all going to be weak acids. Um, by and large, most things are going to be weak acids unless they're things like hydrochloric acid or nitric acid or sulfuric acid or uh, phosphoric acid uh, or phosphatinic acid. Um, by and large, most of them are not going to be uh, strong. Uh, our oxo acids, of course, the strength of those is determined based on the difference in the number of hydrogens to oxygens. But that was all talked about previously. Um, okay, so how do we then predict the relative acidity of salt solutions from reactions of the ions with water? So this is kind of like um, a question that you might get in a quiz or a long test on this kind of thing. You're given a salt and you're asked, will it produce an acidic solution? Will it produce a basic solution? Will it produce a neutral solution? So um, you really just have to kind of analyze the actual ions involved. So, uh, and try to figure out which kind of uh, acid or base they might've come from. Because all of these salts ultimately are produced from the uh, neutralization reaction of a particular um, acid and base reaction. So we're asked to predict whether aqueous solutions of the following are acidic, whether they're basic or neutral. And we're asked to write an equation for the reaction with any ion with water. Okay. So uh, we have here, we've got potassium perchlorate, we've got sodium benzoate, and we've got chromium nitrate. Um, so we need to come up with a plan of what we're going to do. So we need to identify which ones are the cations and anions. We need to evaluate ion reactivity with water. So we need to determine whether or not it's going to react with water or not. So usually like in the case of um, if it came from a weak acid or a weak base, it will react with water. If it came from a strong acid or strong base, it will not. And here are the sort of the evaluations. So it will be acidic if it's a weak base cation, a strong acid anion. It will be basic if it's strong base cation and weak acid anion. And then it will be neutral if it's strong, strong or small, highly charged metal ion. Okay. so. Um, even like weak weak is a bit more complex uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in uh, a little while. Okay, so um, if we have potassium perchlorate, we have here, I'll do the first part for you. Like we'll split that up into K plus and then CLO4 minus. Okay. So um, potassium perchlorate. Potassium ions, are those coming from a strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base? Can someone please help me out? Think about where did, where might that come from, potassium ions? Any ideas? Potassium is in the same group as sodium. You can write it in the chat if you don't want to say it. I'm just asking which acid or base it may have come from. Um, you're along the right lines, but I'm looking for an acid or a base that's a salt. So is it like coming, is it going to be, I don't know. Um, yes, okay, all right, KOH, potassium hydroxide. 
for you. So um, in this case, it's kind of, it's not, okay, it, it, it's make it a little bit more challenging for you, I guess. Um, so like potassium is in the same group as sodium. So most of, you can basically assume most of what happens for sodium hydroxide is going to be the same for potassium. So it's going to be potassium hydroxide, that's right. Okay. So that means is potassium hydroxide, since it's in the same group as sodium hydroxide, do we think that's going to be a strong acid or a strong base? Oh. That means it comes from HClO4. Now, the reason it's only one is because H plus has got plus one charge and this had minus one charge. So that meant that we just needed to balance that. So we need one positive and one negative. So plus one plus minus one is zero. So we had our acid here as HClO4. Then for our oxo acids, um, the strength of those depends on the difference in the number of oxygens to hydrogens. So what's the difference there between our oxygens and hydrogens? Right, four to one. So the difference is we have a strong one. So if we have a large difference in our oxo acids, uh, like if we have a large difference between the number of hydrogens and oxygens, then we have a strong. If we have a small difference, like uh, one or yeah, basically one or zero, then um, so if like the number of hydrogens and oxygens was equal, or this oxygen number was two, then we would have a weak oxo acid. But since it's quite large, it's a difference of three, we have a strong oxo acid. All right. Okay. So we've worked out that this perchlorate part came from a strong acid, and this potassium part came from a strong base. So now we have strong acid, or sorry, we have the anion from a strong acid, and we have the cation from a strong base. So going back to our uh, evaluation of ion reactivity with water, we look up here um, and we see that in fact, we have strong, strong interactions, which means that we will have a neutral um, solution because neither of these particularly want to react with uh, water. And so they're really just going to kind of sit there in water and be very happy with each other and sort of say, well, I'm having a great day. How about you? Um, and so they're not really that reactive with water. Um, they may be reactive with other things, but not with our water solutions. Uh, same goes for the second one here, sodium benzoate. So you see this big jumble of letters and you go like, okay, what's going on here? Um, but try to break it down into what you know. What do you know about this? Um, well, first of all, there's the name, but um, beyond that, if I just look at the formula, I know it's called so something called sodium benzoate. So sodium, sodium, what is sodium? Sodium I know is Na. So that's a sodium ion. So maybe I split it here. And so now I have sodium plus sodium plus plus the rest of this. The rest of this must be benzoate. Since there's only two ions here, there's a sodium ion and there's a benzoate ion. This must be the benzoate. Um, so since we have a neutral salt here and the sodium ion is in group one, which means it's most likely going to have a plus one charge. That's the common ion formed from group one. Then um, we end up with this C6H5COO minus. All right, so um, this is, well, the sodium ion, right, perfect, yep, sodium hydroxide. Basically, these two um, both form hydroxides very easily. They're both strong bases. All right, potassium ion, sodium. Okay, um, if I were to, for example, put there like even something like uh, rubidium, I would hopefully see you go to your periodic table and try to find rubidium and say, okay, rubidium is group one. All right. Um, that's more of a long test question where you have more time um, to do problem solving rather than like a quiz or something. Um, a quiz, uh, I'll mostly stick to simple ions like sodium and potassium. But in the long test, you might get uh, ions which are further down the periodic table, which you might have to look up. Um, but since they're in the same group, basically have the same reactivity. Um, then for this one, this is the benzoate. So um, again, 
acids always have that H plus, we identified that earlier. So if I'm going to put this, um, put an H on this, I'm going to end up with um, something like C6H5. And then I'm putting an H on the end with the minus to balance the jar COOH. So um, anyone remember what this COOH um, forms? It, like anyone, maybe you don't remember the name exactly, but do you remember what kind of acid it forms? Is it a weak or a strong acid? Yes, okay, very good, all right. So this one forms a weak acid. So now we have the combination of a strong cation from a strong base or a cation from a strong base. And we have the anion from a weak acid. All right, we got the carboxylic acid, a weak acid. So is this what kind of solution do we think we're gonna form here? So we have strong plus weak. Um, so strong um, base cation and weak acid anion. Is it gonna be a basic or um, yeah, basic solution, right, exactly. So it's gonna be a basic solution. Why is it gonna be a basic solution? Well, that's because, so the sodium ion, as we've talked about, kind of just is a, what's called a spectator ion. So much like in a sports game, a spectator is, is kind of just there. They're not really participating in the game, but they are to an extent, you know, they're cheering on the team or whatever, but ultimately they're not responsible for the outcome of the, the sports people. Um, whether or not they win or not is, well, they might get, some energy from the crowd or something, but generally it's up to the, the players to win. Um, so this is not really going to do anything. It's a spectator ion, but this one here, um, it is going to react with water. And so whenever this reacts, yes, Benjamin? Uh, so you can finish your uh, statement first. And then... Okay, so um, the acetate then, so that uh, reacts with water and it gets a proton from the water to form the acid again. And then whenever we remove H from H2O, my internet connection is on. So whenever we remove H from H2O, we end up with OH, OH minus is hydroxide. And so that hydroxide increases the pH and makes us have a basic solution. So, um, so uh, then the last one is a chromium nitrate. We're working with a uh, metal, Salt, um, it's got a high charge, usually three plus or greater is high charge. Um, it's going to be small. It's going to really like take away the, or it's really going to like react pretty strongly with the water in such a way that it weakens that oxygen hydrogen bond. And then that makes it so that the hydrogen can be removed into solution by other water molecules. And that will then um, somehow increase the um, number of hydronium ions in solution, and it will um, create, well, before I tell you, I, I'm supposed to get you to answer this. <laughs> so, okay, so chromium nitrate. So we have the name, we have the formula. So chromium, so chromium is the CR, and then nitrate is this NO3. So chromium is three plus, so that's um, a pretty high charge. And then nitrate um, comes from what acid? Very good, nitric acid. Um, oh, okay. So the nitric acid comes from HNO3. So it comes from this one. I've already told you that um, this is a strong acid because there are three oxygens, there's one hydrogen. So that means three minus one means there's a difference of two. So that difference of two then means that we have a strong uh, oxo acid. So this is going to be the anion caused by from a strong acid. Then uh, we end up with um, the chromium here, which um, is quite highly charged. It will solvate with water. So it will form CrH2O. Six of those will go around. You don't really need to know the number of those. Um, it's usually six, but it's not really what's important for you to, to be aware of. What's really more important for you to be aware of is the idea that this high charge, this three plus, means that some of the oxygen hydrogen bonds in water are weakened. And so we end up with um, this idea that we create um, this, I just put metal, I don't wanna write all that out, metal two plus, 
which is the new form, uh, plus the hydronium ion. And then this creates more acid. So um, since this is basically a spectator ion and this produces acid, what do we think our solution is going to be? All right, indeed, very good, acidic. Um, hopefully you knew that um, from our previous explanations and not just because of what I talked about there. But basically, um, whenever we have these highly charged metal ions in water, what I want you to remember and think about is that they destabilize the waters around them. So they weaken the water bonds. And that means that some of the water, some of the OH bonds are broken. And these hydrogens from the broken bonds are picked up by other water molecules and they form this. And so basically small, highly charged ions like this will form hydronium, which is going to increase the concentration of hydronium. And that is going to reduce the pH and that is going to make an acidic solution. Okay, so uh, here we have um, a summary of what we just talked about in detail. Um, we have potassium perchlorate. Um, so K plus is the cation of a strong base, KOH, while perchlorate is the anion of a strong acid, uh, perchloric acid, and so it's therefore neutral. You don't like, a, as Benjamin asked earlier, like, do I need to know all of the acids and bases? You do not. But um, what you need to know is that uh, on time acids are with uh, protons. So whenever we split up a salt, um, we should know that the anion being negatively charged will not really get an OH minus because putting two negatives together doesn't really work in chemistry. What we usually do is we mix a negative with a positive to make something that's neutral. So in the case of the perchlorate, the ClO4 minus, we put a proton on there because that's H plus. And so that's positively charged. So one positive charge and one negative charge cancel out and produce our acid, this HClO4. So that's the kind of thing that you need to know that acids um, that like, like the anions usually come from acids because that balances the charges and cations usually come from bases because they have a base because the cations have a positive charge they're k plus and the oh minus has a negative charge and so they come together and they make a neutral um, compound then sodium benzoate um, same thing sort of uh, so sodium ion is the cation of a strong base, the sodium hydroxide, while the benzoate anion, benzoate here, is the anion of a weak acid, benzoic acid. Benzoate ion will react with water to produce OH minus ions. Here it is, in it's all its glory. And then finally, the same thing with the uh, chromium perinitrate. Um, so the nitrate is the anion of a strong acid, does not really react with water. Uh, chromium is a small, highly charged um, cation and it will react with water to destabilize um, some of the bonds and we end up with this and um, our hydronium. I'm going through this slide pretty quickly because we went through an excessive detail on the previous slide so um, but this is a pretty good summary of um, description of why things happen in the way they do. Um, okay salts of weakly acidic cations and weakly basic ions. So a salt that consists of a cation of a weak base and the anion of a weak acid, um, the pH of the solution will depend on the relative acid or base strength of the ions. So um, this is um, where we're starting. So like so far, we've only considered situations where at least one of the ions, either the cation or anion, came from a strong acid or base. But what happens if we mix two weak, uh, if we mix the cation from a weak base with the anion from a weak acid, what happens? Like both of those can react with water. So how do I determine the pH of my solution? So like, for example, we mix ammonium with uh, acetate. Both of those are from either a weak base or a weak acid. So what is, what's the pH going to be? Well, it depends on our equilibrium constant. Sorry. It depends on our equilibrium constants for that, our Ka values. So, um, well, in this case, we have uh, ammonium uh, cyanide. So cyanide comes from hydrocyanic acid. Um, as I've said before, Anything which basically isn't what I talked about previously, the oxo acids or the um, 
allergenic acids is pretty much going to be a weak acid or base. Um, so uh, NH4 plus is the cation of a weak base, uh, ammonia, and then uh, CN minus is the anion of a weak acid, hydrocyanic acid. Uh, so yeah, if it's not the if it's not the halogenic acid or a strong ox oxo acid, um, then it's most likely going to be a weak acid. So here we have um, two reactions. One is the reaction of the cation, the ammonium NH4 plus with water to produce um, hydronium ions. So this production of this, we saw this earlier with the um, was it ammonium chloride. Um, where the chloride was the spectator ion, didn't do anything. So the only reaction we had was this, where the ammonium was reacting with water to form ammonia plus um, the hydronium ion. Since this has a weak reaction with water, we were getting a decrease in the pH because we we're getting more acid than base produced. Now, however, we have a, an anion, which is from a weak acid, which is going to make it um, a, a strong conjugate base it will actually react with water to form the acid again and hydroxide. So now in our solution, we have hydroxide and we have hydronium. So the overall nature of the solution, whether it would be acidic or basic, will be determined based on how much or which one of these reactions is better at forming uh, or is this one got a better KA value? Whichever one produces more will uh, will sort of determine the final um, uh, pH nature of the solution. So um, the reaction here that proceeds farther to the right determines the pH of the solution. So we need to compare the KA of NH4 plus with the KB of CN minus. So what does that mean? So proceeds farthest to the right. So which one of these reactions will produce more products? Since the products are what determine the pH in this, these reactions. Because the reason for that is that the products are hydronium, which decreases the pH, makes it more acidic, and hydroxide, which increases the pH and makes it more basic. So we need to compare the Ka with Kb. So the Ka of, um, of NH4 plus is going to be equal to the Kw over the Kb of NH3. So in this case, it's going to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. So that's our Kw. Hopefully we remember Kw as being one times 10 to the minus 14. And then and, um, Kb is going to be um, just taken from a table of values or given to us in the question most likely. Um, so Kb of uh, ammonia is going to be this. So, so that's going to be equal to 5.7 times 10 to the minus 10. Uh, this is just putting into your calculator like, in basically all of my quizzes and exams, you're allowed your calculator. Don't even think that you would have to do this in your head. That's not something that I would ever ask you to do. Um, then the Kb of as the CN minus, again, we're given the Ka of the hydrocyanic acid. We're given that in uh, the question or whatever. So it's Kw over um, uh, Ka. So that's going to be equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 over 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10, given this value here, 1.6 times. 10 to the minus five. And then uh, we compare these values. We see that this value is much larger than this value. So that means that the reaction of the CN minus with water is a better reaction. So that means we're most likely going to have a basic solution because we're producing more OH minus. So since the KB of CN minus is greater than the KA of NH4 plus, CN minus is a stronger base than uh, NH4 plus is an acid. And so a solution of NH4 CN will be basic. So this is, because you have a lot more time in the, the, the um, long time of calculation, um, since you have about what, three minutes per question, two, two, two to three minutes per question as opposed to leisure, like one and a half. Um, well, like you would only get one of these questions per section, more or less. Um, but still, this is the kind of question that could be asked. Um, so, this number is smaller because this uh, exponent is much larger than this number. So this number is closer to one, this number is closer, or not as close to one. So this number is larger. Um, and then that means that we have a basic solution because on our previous slide, we saw that this reaction produces our hydroxides. So more hydroxides means more basic. Okay, so here's a sum 
summary of acid-based behavior of salts in water. So um, our neutral solutions um, are going to be mixtures of um, cations of strong bases and the anions of strong acids. Um, acidics are going to be the cation of a weak base, uh, such as this ammonium, with the anion of a strong acid, such as this chloride coming from HCl. Acidic solutions can also be formed from small, highly charged cations, such as metal cations, mixed with the anion of a strong acid. And since the strong acid anions usually are spectators, then, then here are some ion uh, reaction examples on the right-hand side. So acidic or basic um, de depends on the comparison of the Ka's and the Kb values. Um, and then here we can have acidic or basic solutions as well whenever we have the cation of a strong base with the anion of a polyprotic acid. Although this one at the bottom is not something I'm most I'm probably likely to ask you. Really, I'm probably going to stick to the ones these first four um, here are more likely. Um, this one is a particularly difficult case, so you're likely to only get those occasionally. But these ones are, are pretty, I, I feel like are doable. Um, those are the ones that we spent some time doing the examples earlier. Um, really, you just have to like not, don't, don't, get, don't get too concerned if you see the question. Just think about it rationally. Think about what do I know? How can I apply what, what I know to the question? So try to look for the ions. Try to find ions that you, you know, like sodium, like potassium, like chloride. Are they present? Are they not present? Okay. How do I split this up into its different anions or ions? If I don't know from the formula, look at the name. Does the name give me any clues? Things like that. Don't try not to get too concerned. Um, just think about it and take your time and put yourself in the zone that you need to be in. Okay, so here is a, a worked example. So predicting the relative acidity of salt solutions from Ka and Kb of the ions. So determine whether an aqueous solution of zinc formate, so zinc formate is here, um, at 25 degrees Celsius is acidic, basic, or neutral. So the plan here is to identify the ions. So sodium, or sorry, not sodium, zinc 2 plus is a small, highly charged metal cation. Um, the um, formate here is the anion of a weak acid. So the formate would become formic acid. So that would be HCOOH. Uh, uh, H. Okay. So we split it up like this. Uh, both react with water, so you must compare the Ka and Kb. So zinc reacts with water because it um, destabilizes the water molecules to form the hydroxides. And then the formate reacts with water to form uh, hydronium ions. So uh, in solution, we have this reaction. So um, zinc uh, will become hydrated. So that means it gets these water molecules around it. It will react with more water to get hydronium ions. And this has a K value here. Another reaction happens with the formate reacting with water to give formic acid plus um, this uh, hydroxide, which will make a basic solution. So uh, we want to know um, the Kb of uh, this anion. So it's going to be Kw over the Ka of the formate. So the, the sorry, the formic acid. We would be given in any question that we needed, we would be given Ka values. But usually you won't be given Kb values, but how you find Kb values is um, simply putting um, Kw over the Ka value. So remember that um, Kw is equal to Ka times KB. That's from, I think, I'm not sure if it was the first or second session, but it was in one of those sessions. This is the relationship. So if you're ever given a K value only and you define KB, then just um, rearrange this equation. So we can then find the K B value of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. So we now have a KB value and we have a KA value. We need to compare them. So since Ka is going to be much, much larger than Kb, we have an acidic solution. So this value is smaller than this value. So that means um, we'll get more hydronium produced than hydroxide produced. So since for every hydronium, whenever we have these in solution, they react and they neutralize each other. But if we have more of this than this, then we will have an overall 